Okay, a lot of the interactions that we've been learning about can be represented using a Feynman diagram. So for example, in the electromagnetic interaction, let's say we've got two electrons that are moving each other. Because they're both negative, they're gonna repel each other. How do we represent this? They're gonna exchange a virtual photon, which is the exchange particle for the electromagnetic interaction, and then move away from each other. So in this diagram, the y-axis here, the upward direction, represents time as it goes forward. The x-axis doesn't really represent space. Okay, so I could have done this with any charge, really. I could have done this, for example, with protons repelling each other. And I could have done this, even with attraction, I would still represent it like this. Like I said, the x-axis doesn't really represent space. So even though they should be attracting each other, I could still represent um, the interaction between something positive and negative like this. Also, I could have done uh, antiparticles as well, anything that's charged. So it would, this wouldn't occur with neutrons, for example, because neutrons aren't charged. Okay, we need to know the Feynman diagrams for the weak nuclear interactions. Let's start with the beta minus decay. So a nucleus has too many neutrons, and that neutron is going to turn into a proton. But we know the proton is positively charged, so in order to conserve charge, we need to have something negative being emitted as well. In this case, it's going to be the W minus boson, which is the exchange particle for the weak nuclear interaction. The W minus boson there is going to turn into an electron, which gets emitted from the nucleus. And the proton is going to stay inside the nucleus. Uh, and also, now we need to conserve lepton number. So we need to have an anti-lepton, which is going to be the electron anti-neutrino here. So sometimes you might ask you to represent this in terms of quarks instead. So we know the, that the neutron is made out of up, down, down. And we know the proton is made out of up, down, up. And so what I've shown here is that what's going on really during the beta minus decay is the down quark is turning into an up quark and everything else is staying the same. Okay, beta plus decay. So this nucleus has too many protons and the proton is going to turn into a neutron. So, but that means that the charge still needs to be conserved. So the proton has a positive charge. So you can think of it as emitting its positiveness through the W plus boson. Again, another exchange particle for the weak nuclear interaction. That W plus boson is going to turn into a positron. And in order to conserve lepton number, we need to have a, a, a actual lepton because a positron is an anti-lepton. So we're going to have an electron neutrino to conserve the lepton number there. Okay, and so you can also represent this using quarks well. So we've got the uh, proton here, which I've written down as down, up, up. So this makes it easier to show that the up quark is turning into a down quark when it turns into a neutron. Okay, an electron capture is another weak nuclear interaction. It happens when the electron that's orbiting around an atom gets too close to the nucleus, gets too close to a proton, and it gets captured, captured by that proton. So the proton, of course, can only turn into a neutron. And when it does that to conserve charge, it's emitting its positiveness, the W plus. And that's going to interact with the electron there, the E minus there. So now we'd conserve lepton number. So we've got a lepton at the bottom, the electron, and we'd have another lepton at the top in order to conserve that. So we're going to have an electron neutrino. Now this diagram, I could have drawn it like this, okay, with that the, the exchange particle being in a different slant like this. But in this case, I'd have to write W minus instead. So to, one way to think about that and to explain that is to conserve charge at every point in time. If I take a slice here, we know the proton has a charge of plus one and the electron has a charge of minus one. So overall it's zero. So if I take a slice right in the middle, which is why it's very important to draw it slanted like this. Now we know it's still there's a proton here, so it's plus one. And we've got a neutrino on the right hand side, so it's zero. So this must be minus one in order to have zero. And then let's just check if it's conserved at the end. So we've got zero here, zero here. So overall charge is still zero. So we're conserving charge at every point in time. And that's how you can use to figure out uh, which boson is the W plus or the W minus that's being exchanged. Okay, in the neutron neutrino interaction, we've got a neutron and a neutrino coming in like this. The neutron is going to turn into a proton, not much anything else you can really turn into. And the proton got positive charge, so there needs to be a negative charge in order to be balanced. So that's why we've got a W minus boson here. That W minus boson is interacting with the neutrino, and this is going to be over a very short range, and the um, it's going to turn into a lepton. It has to turn into a lepton, because otherwise we won't conserve lepton number. And we also need to conserve charge. So the only option here is the electron, in which case the lepton number is plus one before and plus one after as well. Okay, so we're going to complete this diagram here. So this is a proton antineutrino attraction. So the proton is turning into a neutron. So to conserve charge, it's going to have to emit 
its positiveness. Okay, so there's total charge conserved, so it's going to be W plus exchange boson, and that W plus is going to have to turn into a positron. Okay, otherwise we won't conserve charge and we won't conserve lepton number as well. The lepton number at the start here, as uh, due to the anti neutrino, is going to be minus one, so it's a minus one at the top of all because we've got an anti uh, electron, a positron at the top right there.